So, tech in-game, and here we are, guys. So, welcome to the Empire Collective Cup. Let's do that chat off right here. And uh, we are here with the Platinum League, Loiza versus Yellow, a.k.a. Say My Name. And for ease, we will be calling him Say My Name, because... Um, even though you guys are going to spam Zach in the chat, whenever I say that, it is just easier to call Say My Name, Say My Name, rather than call him Yellow, since he's not playing in the color Yellow. Uh, if he's playing in the color Yellow, then it's fine, but he's currently playing in Grey, and I've got team colors on, so he's currently playing in Red. And uh, Say My Name is over to the right side of the map, playing as the Japanese, and Loiza over to the left side, playing in the Blue as the Britons. Now, uh, as a Brit, as a fellow Briton here, I'm uh, gonna finish off my cup of tea before we dive into this game. The Zach spam in the chat is unreal. Even Nightbot's joining in, goodness me. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Um, but yeah, it should be a nice game, nice set of games. Uh, so far, of course, Loiza uh, doing a little better so in this tournament than Yellow at this stage. Or say my name, sorry. Doing a little better. However, uh, Loiza has only played two games so far, and uh, he is yet to play his round two games still. And uh, considering we're now in round four, he is falling behind. But he will be playing against VH tonight, and those, uh, those games, uh, those... Uh, Scores should be updated this evening. Now, yellow here. Sorry, say my name. I need to just say say my name. It's like so much easier. Say my name. Coming in with his scout cavalry, pretty quick. Obviously, he scouted his own area fairly quickly. Found his boar, and he headed straight out there. But since he took a little bit of damage from the TC of Loiza, he's going to get out, and he's not going to be able to steal a boar or anything like that. Which is perhaps what he was planning to do. Now there is a little bit of uh, a pause now, it seems, but uh, only temporarily. Game will resume, no problem. And Loiza here, not the most efficient start. He accidentally killed that sheep on the right side. And uh, that now means that he has taken uh, a little bit of uh, extra... Uh, sorry, losing a little bit of food here, which he really doesn't want at this point. Uh, the map, by the way, is a hideout. And uh, if... Uh, by the way, the is, bet, is the bets closed? Are the bets closed right now? Oh, no, they're not. Oh, yeah, they are. Wait. Hold on. Yeah, the bets are closed. Alright, good stuff. Uh, I was a bit confused then for a second. I thought the uh, bets were still open. Um, but yeah, the map is hide out. We've seen this map tons of times in game one. And uh, it's coming up, like, really frequently. Surprisingly frequently. I, I didn't expect this map to be so, like, common. But it, even though there's an even chance of getting uh, all eight of the maps, this one just seems to come up all the time. Like, I don't know, maybe biased uh, weighted dice or something when the uh, random map script uh, decides to roll for which map it just it pulls out but yeah I mean it's it's not a bad map it's interesting and um, let's have a quick look at it I'm looking at Louise's main gold it's pretty like close to the middle here which is uh, not too bad for now but obviously as the game goes on Loiza might end up um, getting that towered as these wood lines get sort of cut closer together and it's probably also the reason why Lois has decided to build his lumber camp over here at first because it's less likely then that uh, anything from the center from yellow will be causing him some troubles or any troubles at all Having a look at uh, Yellow's base, I mean, say my name's base, God, I need to get out of the habit of calling him Yellow. Um, he has actually got a pretty easy kind of wall on this right side here, just a little bit of palisade and he could wall in this way, uh, which is kind of nice. But other than that, like, this is a fairly open map around the edge, and if you want to wall, you tend to have to kind of wall up using, oh wow. Uh, Lois and Nilly losing a villager there. This guy is so close to death. Uh, but you kind of have to wall up here, like you see, uh, kind of towards the town centre. Lois is probably going to end up putting uh, a wall off towards this lumber line here. Um, why are you guys saying I'm muted? You guys, what? You're so mean to me. What? You're such a troll. What's going on? Am I, like, suddenly um, broken again? Because this happens a lot. Like... Hold on, you're just trolling me. My mic's fine. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> God, you're such trolls. This happens all the while now. I'm just gonna... You see, this is the thing, right? I don't read the chat that often. And I always say, like, I should read the chat more. Because, you know, I want to interact with you guys and talk to you guys in the chat. But when I do read the chat, all I get is trolled. And so it makes me think, well, hang on a minute. Maybe I should stop reading the chat. And then I won't get uh, distracted and I won't... You know, think that my mic is muted when I'm obviously not. 
God, you guys are evil. So anyway, yeah, Cello, Cello? Uh, say my name here. That's a combination of yellow and say my name, Cello. Um, say my name, taking away the sheep. He's found Loiza's sheep and he's going to grab them and steal them away. Which is kind of annoying to Loiza now because Loiza here is doing a Dark Age rush, a drush, and he's building his third militia at the moment. But without those sheep, it means he's going to be pushed onto farms sooner, it means he'll have to put more villagers out to berries, and that will hurt him. But, say my name, maybe should have been a little bit more careful and left those sheep in the corner of the map because Loiza's going to grab them back by sheer fluke and take him back towards this TC. Now, say my name here, he did build his barracks early, but he's only got two militia. He's gone up for a fast feudal on 24 villagers, and it looks like we are going to see a fast feudal into man at arms, which is a solid strat and uh, one that is very good for the Japanese, since when the Japanese reach the feudal age, uh, they do get extra attack speed on their um, <laughs> on their infantry, which is very, very good. That wolf there locking onto the villager, and Yellow coming forwards with some vills here. Uh, maybe looking to perhaps do a little bit of forward aggression. Now, this is not the best time to engage this Drush. He will take two militia down very quickly, and the third will likely fall as well as he gets absolutely surrounded by Say My Name's uh, militia there. So three militia remaining. Four villagers going forwards, and uh, this wolf has been a right nuisance. That villager there, quite low on health now, but as he reaches the feudal age, or when he reaches the feudal age, we should see that mana arms upgrade come in, in theory, and we should also, well, possibly see um, a few more militia coming out as well, or mana arms when he's done that tech. Now, the problem for Lois there is he didn't send his scout forward with his militia, so they got absolutely wrecked, uh, very easily dealt with, very easily cleaned up, and uh, just like as you can see. With Say My Name having a single extra militia, he killed that Drush easily. Now you can understand really why the Aztec Drush is so strong. But remember, of course, the Aztecs are banned for Game 1. Aztecs, Mines, Vikings, and the Huns. Not allowed for Game 1 here. So double bit attacks coming in and the mana arms upgrade as well. That's the big one. And the question is now, will he be able to do much with that? Obviously the mana arms upgrade, 100 food, 50 gold, it's quite expensive. And in order to actually do anything or make use of that, he has to kill at least one villager, I think, or do some serious major disruption. So yellow here going to be unfortunate in the fact he will not finish that tower. It's getting surrounded by Loiza's vills. Loiza bringing his villagers forward there just the right time and now of course one villager will go down instantly making these mana arms much more valuable and that watchtower is going to be replaced anyway and uh, of course Loiza just needed to buy himself time there in order to get his own tower up in defense and it looks like Loiza should in theory just be able to get his tower up in time here to be nice and safe but uh, yeah on the left side here Looking pretty good for Yellow right now. Sorry, say my name right now. He's also taking a bit of stone back at home with five villagers there, which is very characteristic of a tower rush, but he will also lose a villager to the defensive tower of Loiza, coming forwards with a forward archery range, and I like this play. I do like high aggressive build orders. I do like this a lot, and uh, I do think that um, this could be applying a, a really large amount of pressure. Loiza with this lumber line at the top is pretty exposed actually and I don't know if yeah he does. Uh, say my name does know that that lumber line is there so I'm kind of surprised that he's not sent his mana arms up there to maybe find some villagers because they're way away from that uh, TC and this right side's pretty walled up and pretty defended now with this tower as well. Loiza then he's just uh, taking his sweet time doing archers right now Five villagers now onto, uh, sorry, four onto gold. I thought this one was going over to gold as well, but no, just four. But he should send these two villagers and this black uh, villager building the blacksmith out to gold as well. And then he can do two archery range production. Now, these archers here are obviously going to have an upper hand against the mana arms. Shouldn't be too difficult for him to... Uh, to take them out with a little bit of micromanagement, he should be fine. He's currently doing fletching as well, but Yellow has not just stopped with the mana arms here. Say my name, sorry, not just stopped with the mana arms. He is now making, of course, 
skirmishers and archers himself. Getting housed a little bit, which is slightly messy and not ideal to say the least, but uh, keeping that pressure on and now heading towards that lumber line, which is exactly where he needs to go. Lois is running away. Where are those villagers going? They're going straight into the army of Say My Name, but... Say my name knows that he's going to lose that fight if he goes against Loiza here with his fletching upgrade and his scout and the villagers, of course, which are coming out to fight as well. Causing a lot of idle time, though. That villager's going to die, and that is certainly not ideal. Both of these guys even on villager count now, but uh, with the man at arms in here attacking just that bit faster, they are going to lose, uh, or oh, sorry, Loiza will lose an extra villager in this fight as well. I don't know if I agree with the decision to bring all the villagers out of here now. Um, he's losing a lot more than he really should. And he, wow, he's everything he's got, all the villagers coming over to take down this watchtower as well. But while that watchtower stands, it's going to be doing additional damage to the villagers out here. And this is costing Loiza a lot of villager time. And of course, uh, costing him a couple of villas as well. But at the same time, say my name, also... Also struggling to keep his villagers alive. These Ford villagers all dead apart from the single villager which survives over here Meaning that say my name will actually fall behind in villagers at this point even after killing a few of Loises himself, so this is um, This is a really uh, good defense from Loisa at the moment and of course uh, he will now be able to push this back and uh, Say my name really just unable to Keep his towers down, like keep his towers up. He was unable to make them stick, really. And with having fletching upgrade now as well, this army has a really big advantage against the small number of units that Say My Name is making. And this is like really characteristic of him. Like VNS Yellow, aka Say My Name, um, same guy, different name. I wish the players would just have a single name and stick to it. I really wish. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this basically gives, uh, this is very characteristic of him. And uh, he's seen to like do forward aggression and like ridiculous stuff all the time. So uh, completely expected he'd go for this kind of build here. Now currently, currently killing another villager, but it seems like he's had quite a bit of villager idle time at the TC. He's still a villager behind Loiza, even after killing yet another one. And as you can see here, not queuing vills entirely, because he's not quite got the food. He's queuing up um, skirms, he's really kind of focusing on producing more military now, and as a result, his TC kind of falling by the wayside a little bit. He's having to seed more farms to keep those villagers coming in, and uh, he's kind of just, yeah, not quite able to keep up with Loiza's production, and uh, not only that, but Yellow is also housed, and he has been housed a lot this game as well. Currently, Loiza has the military advantage. He's got the most units out. Just like Loiza here might just lose another villager. I'm surprised that um, Yellow tried, didn't try and focus this one down a bit more. There you go. He's going to take it now, and uh, he's going to get out of there because, well, skirmishes are not the best, and since Loiza now has plus one defense as well, uh, these are very strong with those extra buff uh, defense upgrades. But uh, both these guys look like they're going to be stuck in a bit of a feudal war for, for a little while. Loiza with a ton of farms though, so perhaps his food income is going to start like floating, uh, or he's probably going to start floating a little bit of food fairly soon as uh, Yellow continues to keep this pressure on. Um, but yeah, right now, with that plus one defense upgrade for uh, Loiza, it's, it's really helping him out. But these guys complaining about a little bit of lag. And meanwhile at the back, I totally didn't notice this, but uh, Louise is coming in with a counter-attack here. Yellow, of course, building lots of towers all around his base, all through his eco, to try and keep these villagers safe. And at the moment, most of them will be fine. Those five villas on the stone there will be absolutely okay, and the tower will take these skirms down. But you see how, like, tanky skirms can be underneath these towers as well? It's pretty crazy. And the problem here for Yellow, of course, for, for saying my name, he has no defensive buildings, so... Well, well, defensive military production buildings. So his answer to this is just another tower. He's got more towers in his eco here as well, and generally speaking, that's not so good. So Loiza are doing wheelbarrow now. It looks like he's got more farms up as well. If not, it's very close. Loiza with 17 farmers and Yellow with 10. So, seven more farmers from Loiza. And with Wheelbarrow Upgrade now coming in, uh, Loiza should be up to the Castle Age in a very, very good time. And, you know, that's going to be pretty huge for him, actually. If he goes Castle now, gets a Siege Workshop out, uh, he will be able to clean this army up very, very easily. But it's worth noting, 
say my name, adding in plus one defense as well, and he is indeed now going to be pushing this back on the left-hand side. Who will get the win in this fight? Well, it looks like Loiza has the most skirmishers, and Yellow there unable to do enough damage, walking into a whole bunch of them, getting absolutely wrecked since his army consisted mostly of archers there. And now going to have to go back because that is not a fight he wants to take. Yellow just doing a wheelbarrow right now, quite late in comparison to Loiza, and you can see the difference here in food. Loiza currently with 630 food, Yellow with 228, and uh, roughly about the same uh, wood and gold for both of them. Loiza going up to the castle age in just a second. He's got his two buildings, the archery range and the blacksmith, and that castle age upgrade is going to be pretty good for him. Of course, he is the Britons here, and we got to bear that in mind because now, of course, once Loiza reaches the castle age, his archers are going to become a little bit more powerful. They're going to get that power spike. They're going to get the extra range that comes with the castle age and couple that with Bodkin Arrow and they're going to be pretty devastating. Um, obviously, the Britons will always have better archers than the Japanese. And so in the castle age, I'd go to say, you know, as far as say that the Britons have a very big advantage. Not only do they get uh, better units thanks to their longer range, but they also um, get cheaper town centers. So they're going to be able to... Um, basically boom their eco a little faster and all that good stuff as well. Loiza though, at the moment, not quite enough gold income it seems. He's had to put more villagers out to gold now, but with three archery range uh, ranges, sorry, he certainly doesn't have enough gold income to keep archer production going from all three uh, TCs. So, sorry, three archery ranges. Herder. Um, but gold mining coming in and with uh, seven villagers on gold, just one or two more, and he'll be able to keep archers coming out comfortably. But right now, obviously, Loiza with the superior army, 28 units uh, versus the 20 of Say My Name. And Say My Name, since he's not gone up to the castle age yet, since he's still struggling to hit that 800 food point, he is uh, currently ahead in villagers. Just clicking up to the castle age now. But I think Loiza, if he is quick to act, if he does his upgrades quickly, namely doing um, Elite Skirmisher, and crossbow and bodkin arrow then he should be able to do a lot of damage to yellow and he might just be able to get himself a little bit of a well a very big advantage in fact I say a little bit of an advantage but it will be a big advantage so loiza right now doing crossbow immediately uh, but i really think um you know elite skirmisher is worth it at this point he's got a lot of skirms he's got a total of 15 skirmishers there I think, uh, wait, no, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, it's nine in a row, okay, so nine plus, okay, he's got 14 skirmishes there, but still totally worth doing elite skirmisher at this point, especially since he knows that yellow will likely be going for um, crossbows or elite skirms himself at this point. Um, say my name, at the moment, no signs of adding a stable or anything like that, he'll probably want to go for a siege workshop as well, and if you look at that, Wood, my goodness me, a thousand wood. He'll very quickly throw down two TCs, I'm sure, and probably throw down a siege workshop as well. So he's going to do a little bit of everything. A lot of archers coming out here, though, and uh, maybe, maybe he'll actually do a university as well. We'll see. He has obviously got a lot of um, wood in the bank, like so many resources. As soon as he hits castle, he's going to be ready to drop the base, essentially. Just go huge. Loiza doing ballistics, and that's kind of, like, I like that a lot. Um, no siege weapons for him, no siege workshop. Potentially going to regret that, we'll see. But uh, ballistics, of course, going to affect all of these ranged units, going to give them a big advantage uh, when it comes to fighting against, say my names, units as well. But let's see now, obviously there's a lot of towers in the economy for Say My Name, and I imagine that uh, it's going to make it pretty difficult for Loiza to push in. He'll try and find a way. Of course, these skirms are pretty tanky underneath the Watchtower fire, but to get in there and find some villager kills is going to be tough. And this is why I thought earlier on that Loiza perhaps could have done a Siege Workshop, because a Siege Workshop would allow him to take these two archery ranges down with a ram, and it would allow him to push forwards as well with some siege. Maybe, you know, a ram or a mangonel to take down some of these towers and penetrate those defenses of yellow here. So right now, Loiza with a pretty nice lead. He's got a villager advantage. He's got his second TC up. He can afford his third. 
And uh, he's finding some villagers as well. Killing a couple in the back here. This guy gonna run for his life, but will he make it away? I think he might just. This villager here, she's really low. She will die. And uh, this guy getting away with 3 HP. It's his lucky day, or maybe not. Uh, Loiza, um currently gonna lose possibly lose this army here because he's kind of evenly matched against yellow. This is why I think he should have done elite skirmisher early on but notice this yellow here doing hand cart or he just did hand cart really really quickly and uh, totally totally worth doing hand cart at this point but what's he doing with his army on the left hand side I have no idea my gosh look at that so many dead crossbowmen for absolutely nothing running headlong into that TC taking a beating from the skirms and the crossbows on the right side and not actually paying any attention it seems to this at all and of course Loiza with the extra range on his crossbows with a little bit of micro here will have a huge advantage but a forward siege workshop from saying my name and uh, this could be pretty bad of course if Loiza cannot figure out how to defend this TC then he's going to be in a bit of trouble but Loiza has spotted the mangonel he's building a siege workshop of his own and right now Loiza's on three TC's Yellow is on the two. And this is interesting because Yellow here, even though he can afford that third TC, uh, it's taken him quite a while to put it up. However, since he's done hand cart really early on, I think his eco will be looking pretty solid. But he's just behind in Vils right now. And I don't think that's that hand cart upgrade is going to make up for the fact he's 20 villagers behind. Certainly going to help a little bit. But uh, Loiza's eco is uh, really starting to pull ahead at this stage of the game. Now Loiza here with his mangonel of course, not gonna be able to trade too successfully, but oh man, what was that micro? Yellow there should have moved out the way and he would have been fine. With uh, the mangonel advantage though, Yellow here should be able to um, keep, the, uh, keep the aggression up. He should be able to keep making more. But right now, What's he doing? He's stopped production. He's got a thousand gold in the bank. His eco does seem a little messy, whereas Loiza's seems a little more evenly distributed, to say the least. Potentially, potentially. But uh, yeah, I mean, if, if Loiza's not paying attention for a split second here, or if Say My Name's not, they are just going to lose their mangonels. They're going to trade one for one um, in both situations. So neither of them coming out on top. But really, I mean. Say my name should have had the advantage there because he had his siege workshop up first. It was Loiza who was having to defend and he should have really had his third mangonel out by now and uh, took the advantage there. But back at home, I mean, there's really very little military production for Say My Name here. He's just got his two archery ranges and he's got a single siege workshop, but he's not really making a whole lot of units. Whereas Loiza, he's got three archery ranges and a siege workshop. A little bit more in the way of military production, uh, but he is behind in military as well. He's been unable to really do a whole lot of eco damage, and uh, he's been cleaned up a few times now outside of Say My Name's base. Castle up here for Loiza as well will help him to secure this gold, and it will prevent that mangonel from pushing in this way, since the castle will take it down immediately as soon as he gets in range. Smagging out, being focused, fired down. Oh my gosh, one HP remaining. Surely Loiza will finish this off. One HP. And back it goes. Wow. That's, this is why as well you don't leave a mangonel at 1 HP. Because it will go back and it will get repaired. So that's basically like, you know, saved by the skin of its uh, of its wood. And uh, Loiza will have to deal with two mangonels now. Whereas it could have very easily been destroyed with just a single extra shot. At the cost of maybe one or two crossbows. But really not a lot else. Well, this is uh, sending a few units around the right side, not finding a whole lot though at the moment. And uh, currently, Loiza building a market here, so he is going to be able to redistribute some of his resources, keep his economy uh, well sorted out, and uh, go up to the Imperial Age now, which is uh, very good for him. And I think, you know, as this game goes on, the Britons, as long as they go for Arbalest and they go down that um, route, they should be. They should be able to pull an advantage uh, against the Japanese. But we'll have to wait and see. More archery ranges coming up. Elite Skirmisher now for Loiza as well. And uh, I'm starting to think that maybe 
you know, Loiza's lack of gold here is going to be a bit of a problem. And this is where the aggression from Yellow is working pretty well. Because if you look in the north of the map, you can see Loiza with his outpost. He's been looking for gold. He's looking out here to find any extra gold piles. But what he doesn't know is that, well, I guess he does know now. But what he didn't know is that there's no gold up in the north of the map at all. No gold across this top side or edge of the map. It's all down here. And uh, right now... He's got to get that somehow, and the way he's going to do that is more castles, basically. Another castle now coming up, uh, so he can secure the next gold pile here, and make sure he's actually got some decent gold income. Now, talking of gold income, it doesn't look like um, Yellow has much at all, actually. He's actually mined out his main gold here, and he's moving all of his villagers over to the second gold at the moment. But it's not really very efficient, to say the least, and he wants to split them up to this gold, on the right side, but without any castles, it's going to be really tough for, say my name, for Yellow to actually be able to defend those villagers against any raiding units that Loiza might be sending out there. So Loiza could actually deny a little bit of gold here from Yellow, and uh, in the same sense, Yellow kind of denying a little bit of gold from Loiza as well, which is why Loiza has been forced to build these two castles so far. But Loiza. We've seen him play Britons before. We nearly saw him beat the Viper playing as the Britons. He certainly knows what to do. And I imagine we'll see Arbalest coming in pretty soon. Of course, Bracer very quickly here. And uh, Treb's coming out as well. A single trebuchet to deal with these buildings. These forward buildings of Yellow. Now, Yellow, interestingly, like I said earlier, has no castle yet. And he is taking a little bit of stone. But... He's really not got enough villagers on stone for a castle in a good time. He is going to be able to wall this top side up, but no castle coming out just yet. And that means that no answer to the Trebs of Loiza right now either, which is obviously less than ideal to say the least. Chemistry coming in for Loiza, and he's only just doing handcart. Now imagine if Loiza had done handcart earlier. Just imagine what his eco would be right now. But yeah, this is going to be... You know, fairly costly to Yellow because Yellow I mean, obviously doesn't want to lose these buildings because he's going to have to rebuild them. He's going to have to fall back if these buildings go down. At the same time, he has got a lot of wood though, but he really doesn't want to have to spend that wood on rebuilding the infrastructure. He wants to spend it on making more military, but no more siege for him until he builds another siege workshop. And uh, Loiza here can just take down all these buildings. So currently, Arbalest coming in for Yellow now. And uh, also doing chemistry, also doing capped ram. And uh, rams work incredibly well against the Britons. A lot of people always say to me, like, ah, how do you deal with the Briton longbow? They're just too good. Well, the answer really is rams. You know, if you can make some rams, then you can stop the Britons from uh, from being too too much of a problem. Because the uh, rams, of course, will just soak up the arrow fire and allow you to close the gap to them. Now, at the moment, Loiza killing a bunch of his own units here with this uh, mangonel, but he doesn't seem like he really cares. He's going to keep pushing forwards, take the hill, and try and push these arbalest back. And, of course, this is where elite skirmisher do that job incredibly well. Um, not really a whole lot that uh, Yellow can do against skirms right now without a mangonel or an onager, which is something he would really quite like at this point in time, I'm sure. Uh, this ram going to go down as well. A single arbalest inside, which shouldn't be too much trouble to clear out with these skirms being in play. And uh, Loiza looking very strong at the moment. He looks set to take a win at this point. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. On the right side, Loiza now coming in with a another siege workshop. He's done loads of siege. Um, he's got capped rams now as well. And he will be... Uh, wow. It's like watching a computer play. Trying to build an, uh, a, a university in the back of Loiza's base. I mean, this is like the epitome of a university forward. Like a forward university. I've never seen such a forward university in my time. And... Uh, Yellow's trying to finish it off. He he desperately wants that education. He's like, I will educate you, Loiza. You will take my books and you will take my statues and you will learn about my culture. And Loiza's like, get out of here. <laughs> Just bashing that. Oh my god. Ridiculous. Um but yeah, on this right side. Loiza with a counter-attack, Arbalest here, siege, uh, sorry, capped rams as well, since the Brits don't get siege ram, and he'll easily break those walls. Meanwhile, Yellow will try his best to do as much damage as possible on this left-hand side, but he's just not getting enough momentum here at all. Like, he, yeah, he's just, 
not getting the momentum he needs. Uh, with this aggression coming in on the right side and Yellow basically having no answer to it. Loiza, as long as he focus fires this Onager down, should be fine. Oh, Onager, literally just updating. Or upgrading, rather. And uh, Loiza will just focus fire it. Because 10 range, guys, 10 range. So easy, so easy. And uh, yeah, right now, that's going to be a lot of dead villagers. Right now, um, Yellow only just putting up a castle to defend his eco. But there's already rams coming in. His buildings are going to go down. And he is persisting on uh, pushing in on the left-hand side. But Loiza right now with a lot of gold, a lot of wood. And he should be making a lot of arbalest. He should be making a lot more um, skirms as well. He has the resources for it. He's certainly not got any shortage of resources here. But I think at the moment, focusing on this aggression on the right side. More siege workshops, of course. And he'll probably just be able, uh, be able to clean this up fairly easily. Um... Saying that though, Onagers will be pretty good for Yellow here. Because um, they will be able to of course take down Rams very easily. And if they stay behind the castle, they should be okay. But it looks like this TC will fall since that Onager there just isn't isn't able to pathfind its way over to that Ram as much as you would like to. And uh, meanwhile, Loiza just, what? Deploying his treb in the middle of nowhere? I guess he wants to take down this TC, right? And uh, wow, that's pretty uh, pretty... Well, fairly large army, actually, from yellow on this left-hand side. A lot of skirms there. More importantly, a lot of onagers. And unless Loiza can get a decent number of... Um, a decent number of... Uh, Arbalest out, those onagers will be a little bit annoying, actually. And right now, it seems like he's not got a whole lot in defense. He's got onager himself. Maybe that will be enough to push this back with a little bit of good micro. If he's paying attention... It's worth noting as well, earlier on at the start of the game, I mentioned about how, oh dear, on the right side here, looks like that orange is not going to be successful in taking this army down. Easy pickings for Loiza now. A little bit of micro sorted. Uh, you know what I was saying earlier about this gold mine being pretty close to the wood in the center? Yellow actually did put a watchtower up there, and it did push a few villages off the wood. Uh, but the gold is absolutely fine, so it's not really a problem. Uh, but yeah, Loiza looks like he just needs to kind of close this out. But at the same time, on the left side, it's a pretty big army from yellow. It's almost like Loiza just doesn't want to acknowledge this army's existence. It's pretty, pretty scary looking, actually. You know, Capt Ram's pushing forwards, taking down his TC. Where's Loiza's defense? Well, he's not got any because he's sending everything he's got up to the top of the map. It's almost like a base race situation with... Loiza trying to push this castle down inside of Yellow's base, and Yellow just trying to push everything down with this army inside of Loiza's base. I, I can't believe Loiza's not even bothering to try and defend this. There's a lot of siege here. It's not, you know, it's not a, a nice army to deal with, to say the least. Uh, kind of trading here, though, fairly evenly with the Onagers. My god, 1 HP on that Onager there. <laughs> I'm just surprised that Yellow's managed to keep all these buildings up for so long. And at the back of the map now, Loiza just working on denying that gold from uh, Yellow. And Yellow, not really too fussed by that, I imagine. He's got 1,400 gold in the bank at this point. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, Yellow can actually get the win here. It's still very, very close. Um, did Lo is Loiza making knights? Oh my goodness me. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's not making knights. He didn't like cavalry. I was going to say knights would be a little strange. Uh, new Kirill, like, confusing me in the chat there. Like, Loiza are making knights? Did I miss something? Um, light cavalry, they're okay. They're okay. I mean, neither of these civs are very good cavalry civs, to say the least. But, um, obviously, light cavalry here going to be able to get in and disrupt the elite skirmishers pretty effectively. Uh, with a few of them, they will be able to kill a lot of, a lot of, uh, skirms this game. But, yeah, I mean, yellow's not really advanced that quickly. Or, or very, you know, very far. This is a bit of damage. He's raiding this wood line over here. But Lois is still ahead in villagers. And with this light cavalry coming out at almost the perfect time. He will be able to take that army out completely. And back at home, Yellow here, not able to make those onagers pay. This castle still stands, though, and Loiza does not seem to be adding in too much more siege on this right side. But look at that, 6k wood in the bank, and Loiza can sell wood right now for 46 gold. 
I feel like even though he's got a thousand gold in the bank, Loisia should sell a couple of thousand wood and get the market value for it. I think he just sold some actually. His wood just took a big dip. But yeah, I mean, he's got so much wood, so much gold. Like, he could do more Arbalest at this point. I mean, he could really, he's got so many options. He could do more Onagers. I mean, he's just got so much resource here at this point in the game. Yellow certainly seems to have taken a, uh, a turn for the worse in terms of resources as well. Very little gold left since Loiser is now denying the gold on the right hand side. And he doesn't have access to these gold piles either since Loiser's been pushing around on this left hand side as well. So I think Yellow's looking uh, very much like he's on the ropes. But if he can secure some gold, I really don't think it's all over for him. He's just got to push up this hill and that's the hard part. Loiser holding the hills of course. And without gold, it's going to be very difficult for Yellow to do a whole lot. He has no relics either, so if that gold runs out, it's it's gone. It's like, that's it. It's it's done. If the gold is gone, the gold is gone. Uh, no relics to generate anything whatsoever. And all these forward buildings now being cleaned out by Loiza as well. The addition of light cavalry there, I think, turning the game around completely. Because all those um, skirms just no longer useful to Yellow whatsoever. And Loiser here just looking like he's going to be able to take the win as he cleans these buildings out and pushes back uh, pretty well on this right side. Starting to raid now with the Light Cavalry. And I think Yellow put up a great fight. It was nice, uh, a nice forward, but it's time to call GG. And indeed it is. He will GG out right there. And a uh, pretty good start for Loiser with one point now on the board for him after winning game one quite conclusively. Now it never really looked like Yellow was in a position that he was like, you know, going to gain a lot of momentum. I was surprised at Loiza's uh, uh, option to like basically neglect this, his, his like base. He just completely forgot about it and just went right the way around uh, to the right hand side with everything he had. All those arbalests just going around to the right side to hit Yellow's economy. Um, but yeah, I think the uh, the addition of light cavalry there was basically the, the game winning move by Loiza, that's for sure. So uh, well played by Loiza there. Of course the t colors swapping at the end due to the team colors being enabled. But uh, there you have it, game number one. And game two will now be, uh, it will be yellow's home map. Sorry, I almost said Loiza's home map.